Hello everyone, in this video, I'll be making 10 different scratch games in 8 minutes. Anyways, let's get started. So this first game will be a simple shooter game. So I'll start by creating a triangle for our player, and then I'll create a new sprite for the enemy, and then a bullet sprite, and then lastly, a dark backdrop. All right, so let's make the player first point towards a mouse pointer. All right, now let's make it shoot when the mouse is down. So let's create a clone of the bullet every 0.2 seconds. And then inside of our bullet, let's make the original sprite hide and let's show the clones. And let's make the bullets go to the player and point towards the mouse pointer. And lastly, let's make them move until it touches the edge or touches the enemy. All right, so now we have a spaceship that shoots. And for the enemy sprite, let's make enemies constantly spawn. All right, now for the enemy clones, let's show them first. And then let's make them spawn in any one of these four corners. And now let's make them point towards the player. And also constantly move towards the player. And also make them disappear when they touch the bullet. Alright, and then let's make the game stop when the enemy touches a player. And we have now completed our first game. Awesome. Now our second game will be a moving shooter. So let's copy our first game and make the player move. Alright, now we can move with the arrow keys. And now for the enemy, let's make it constantly point towards the player. And then that should be it. So this is our second game, which is a moving shooter. Moving on from shooters, our third game will be a mouse dodging game. So this time I made the player a square and the enemies a triangle, and I removed the bullet sprite. So all I need inside of the player is the go to mouse pointer, and then inside of the enemy sprite, I'm gonna change this to spawn a little bit faster, and then I'm gonna create a new variable called speed, which is for the sprite only, and then I'll set speed to something random like 4 to 8. Alright, and then I added this extra loop. And instead of touching the player, I'll repeat until touching the edge. And then change some stuff inside of here. Alright, so this is our new enemy code and I made the backdrop white. And this is our mouse dodging game. Now our fourth game will be a coin collecting game with a time limit. So I copied our second game, which was the moving shooter, and I'll just make some small adjustments. Alright, now the player moves around pretty quickly. And I'm going to also delete the enemy sprite, and I'll call the bullet sprite coins, and make them a yellow color. And then inside of the coin sprite, I'm going to constantly create clones of coins. And then I'm going to make a coins variable and timer variable, and set coins to zero, and set the timer variable to 30 seconds and change timer by negative one inside of the forever loop. And now we have a timer. And now I'll make the coins go to a random part of the screen and make the player able to collect the coins. All right, and now we have a coin collecting game. Now our fifth game will be similar to our fourth game, but this time the coins are enemies and we will have to dodge them. So instead of coins, let's name this enemy and let's take out the coins variable all right, so I'm gonna just leave this for the enemies and I'll rename this to time survived and set this to zero. And I'll make the enemies wait one second after being spawned and make them follow the player. And once they touch the player, then let's stop the game. All right, and we have our fifth game. Now for our sixth game, we'll be dodging walls instead of enemies. So I'll create a long rectangle as our wall and let's always make them spawn at the top of the screen. And then let's make them move from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen like so. And I'll make the walls spawn a bit slower. All right, and this is our sixth game. Now for our seventh game, 
let's just straight up create Flappy Bird. So I'll make the walls perpendicular. And for the walls, instead of moving from up to down, let's make them move from left to right. Okay, so let's do change x by negative 5. And then that should be it for the walls. And now inside of the player, I'm going to create a new variable and call this something like y velocity. And I'm going to remove all of this code. I'll grab a go to xy. And now I'll add some gravity. And the game stops when the player drops too low. And this is the jumping. And this is our seventh game. Now for our eighth game, we'll be making an endless runner. So I'll make the walls a bit shorter and thicker. And I'll also create a ground. Okay, now let's make the walls spawn a bit lower. And then I'll just grab a pick random inside of the weight to make the game a bit more fun. And now inside of the player, I don't need this. And then I'm going to add this. And I'll change this to like Y velocity to 12. And then wait something like 0 0.1 seconds. And then I'll create a new block. I'll call this like detect ground. Drag this after the if. And then do something like this for our ground detection. And lastly, I want to make sure to edit this and click run without screen refresh. And now we have our endless runner. Now we'll bring back enemies for our ninth game and have falling spikes that we have to dodge. So I'll first take out the jumping code for the player and instead add the ability to make the player move left and right. And instead of walls, we'll have spikes. All right, now let's make them spawn on top of the screen and make them disappear when the Y position is too low. All right, and this is all of our spike code. And lastly, I'll make them spawn a lot faster. So let's try like 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. And this is our spike dodging game. And lastly, for our 10th game, let's combine our 8th and 9th game and have walls and spikes coming straight towards the player. So I added back the jumping code. Now I'm gonna duplicate my spike sprite Alright, now I want the wall to spawn from both sides. Now I'll add this back in and change some stuff and duplicate this inside of the else. Change some more stuff for this. And then I'll take out the set score and change the score variables because we have that inside of our spike. And lastly for the walls, I'll make them spawn something like 1.2 to 1.8 seconds. And I'll actually make the walls spawn a bit higher. And we have our wall and spike dodging game. Anyways, that was 10 scratch games in 8 minutes. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some ideas for your own games. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!